Hey folks, Dave here with Dagon Lasercraft. Today we're going to create a standing Happy Halloween sign using some free fonts from the internet, which I'll drop a link to down in the description. We'll also use Lightburn laser cutting software to set everything up and use the weld option to tile the letters together, then cut everything out with the X-Tool D1 Pro 40 watt laser. Let's get right to it. Okay folks, here we are in Lightburn. We're going to use a font I downloaded from defont.com called Mortified Drip. I'll put a link in the description so you can go out and grab it and look around at what else they have out there. Just do a search and you can find a lot of good fonts. If you're going to use them in a project, you might want to make sure that they're commercial use or public domain so you can use them as intended. So let's just go over to the left to the text tool and click out on the canvas and start typing. Click the arrow up top, select it, move it wherever you like. Uh, you can also push down on the mouse wheel and move the whole canvas around. Uh, you can scroll in and out with the mouse. Okay, so now uh, this just picked up engraved, but you want to be sure for, for whatever laser you have, uh, you want to set this portion to engrave. And then your your speed and power. Mine's a 40 watt X tool, and this is what uh, has worked for me. Okay, so now we want to uh, be able to tie these letters together, and the best way to do that is to make an outline, and then tie it to the outline. So select your uh, your text, and real quick, if you select from the left you'll notice this red red line on the box and it won't select unless you grab the entire area. If you come from the right, you get a green box and all you have to do is touch it. So pretty good tip. My son gave me that last weekend and uh, it's, uh, it's been helpful already. So thank you, son. All right, uh, so now just select it. Go over to the left to this outline tool, click it. Uh, this is an outward because we're going on the outside and the distance entirely up to you how much distance you want. This will work fine for what we're doing and you can adjust it uh, later on if you're doing a, a project that requires something different from this. Okay, so uh, we're working with a, in my case, a three millimeter ply, piece of plywood, it's 11 inches and change. So in millimeters, I think I'll make this about 10 inches and that's about 257 millimeters. So you want to select it, go up top, make sure your lock is off if, uh, if you're just changing the, the length or the width so you don't adjust your entire object. So off, just go here 257. And that is way too much there. I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> you folks will too. Light burn and laser. You, you're a lot of mistakes in your future. But that's all right. We'll figure it out. So 257. That gives us about 10 inches. Uh, high to 28 is fine. That's uh, an inch is around 25.4. So we're good. All right. So now we want to just select the outside edge and pull it out. That's the background we made from the, uh, from the outline. And while we've got it selected, uh, right click and ungroup. And you've got little trash pieces that show up and you can, you can choose to get rid of them or not. Uh, and just select them and delete them out. There'll probably be more before we get done. 
just makes it a little cleaner. But it wouldn't hurt it that much if you left them there. So, okay, we got those cleaned up. So now you want to group this back so you're sure it stays lined up with your Happy Halloween there. So right click, group. Okay, now we want to tie everything together. And we're going to do that by stretching this background out just a little bit. That works. And that'll give us enough on the bottom to tie into without messing our letters up. And while we've got this selected, this will be your cut. So select your cut palette down at the bottom. And for me, these, these settings are fine. You may have to adjust yours depending on your particular laser. So now we have a cut for the background. We have an engrave for the, the lettering. And now we want to tie this together and then move it back up. So we're going to select the bottom. No, we're not. We're going to go up to the left and we're going to grab a rectangle. We're going to come down, left mouse click. We're just going to come across the bottom. And make that as small or large as you like. But that should work fine right there. Click your arrow at the top left. And then click off. And then select everything. And then go to the center left to the weld option. Click Weld, and now you have one solid piece. And you do pick up a few more jump pieces. So now you can select, ungroup, and you can get rid of these jump pieces again. Or you can leave them there. It's entirely up to you. I might leave them. Nope, I'm going to get rid of them. You do it however you like to do it, but this is the way to do it. Okay, so that looks pretty clean. So now we need to add a tab insert, a slot insert to the bottom of this. Uh, so we're going to group this back. Uh-oh, it is all grouped. So that means this means we got rid of all the junk, which is good. Okay, so we're going to go grab another rectangle. And I'm going to put it in here so I can center it. And I usually make the slot somewhere around 45 millimeters. I don't know what I've done. Okay, I told you, a lot of mistakes. Something happened. Ah. There we go. Okay, 45. And we're going to make it three, I don't know, five millimeters in height. And then that way we, we've got enough of it to touch here and weld to it and have enough to go inside the slot. But to get it in the center, uh, I usually just put it inside the object I'm working with, select everything, and then hit this bullseye button up at the top. That pulls it to the center. Click away, and then just pull it down. And if you don't have to be exactly precise, this works fine. If you've got to be more precise, you've got the vertical and horizontal tools up top. Okay, so now uh, you just need to have it touch and then have some left over. And I'm just estimating there's two millimeters touching it and three millimeters hanging out, but we'll see. Okay, so now you want to select all of that. Then you want to go back over to the weld, click weld, and now we have a single piece. So now this is set for cut, and this one is set for engrave, and which is a fill. Okay, so we just want to click 
and move this back up. Pull in close so you can make sure you're in the best position or wherever you want it to be. Okay, and then click off, that's fine. And then select everything and group that together. Okay, so now we're good here. So now we need a stand to put it in. So we're just going to draw another rectangle. And I, I usually go about twice the size of whatever the height is. So we got, we want somewhere around two inches. Something close. So that works fine. Okay, so now we need a slot. Uh, to set this in. So you want to grab the rectangle, draw a slot the same width 45 and then in this case we want it to be 3. And you want to uh, test and, and sample I don't know what that is. I guess that's some leftover trash up there from, uh, there we go. So you, when you make a slot, you want to test and sample that slot on some scrap. Uh, because if you've got a project going and you got to cut 10 slots or more, you don't want to mess all of them up. And the kerf of your laser, which is the amount of material that it takes with it above and beyond your cut, uh, differs so much between uh, lasers. You just have to work with it, and get uh, familiar enough with your laser to know what that curve is. So, uh, three <clears throat> usually works pretty good for me. Sometimes I'll, I have had some, I've had to set it 2.6 to get a three to fit. So, but we'll, uh, we'll see how this works out. All right, so now just pull that down somewhere in the center. I usually put it off to the center so I can make sure this works right. And then select everything here and then hit this bullseye again and put that in the center. And then you can right click and group this together. Okay, so now we have our Happy Halloween sign set for engraved. Our outside set for cut. We've got our stand and slot, and we can even make these corners around it. So, to do that, you need to ungroup and then just select the outer edge. Go over to the left of the radius button, touch that, and then touch these corners. Sometimes it's a little tricky. There you go. And it'll round them corners off. It's a lot easier than trying to do it with a uh, with something else like I did to start with when I didn't know how to do this. So I'm trying to save you folks some time too, because I have made a whole bunch of mistakes. All right, so then you want to group this back together. Group. Okay, so now we're ready to get set up in the laser bed. And uh, I'll go do that real quick and come back and hit frame and then start to send the code over to the laser. Okay, give me a few minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, we're all set up in the laser bed. Got three millimeter plywood raised up off of the uh, honeycomb to prevent some uh, flash burn. We just need to do a frame and then we can send the code over. Looks pretty good. Sometimes it works the first time. So I'm going to turn on the air assist and the exhaust and then send the code over.
Okay, she's done. I'll put her together and we'll see what she looks like. Okay, well here's the finished product. Turned out pretty good. You could make this insert for the slot a little longer and add some stability to it. But overall, turned out good. So, y'all can go out to defont.com and there's a link in the, uh, in the description where I got this font. And you can make you some Halloween and some other holiday stand-up signs and and many other things ornaments and other stuff so y'all have fun with it I really appreciate you taking time to watch I hope you learned something if you did please like and subscribe check back often for new videos and we'll see y'all next time thank you